People do not understand, they are chained. They are chained, they are imprisoned by their own words. People do not understand, they are chained and imprisoned, like being in a cell, in jail, by their own words. Proverbs 6.2 You are snared by the words of your mouth. You are taken captive by the words of your mouth. Now a snare is something that a poacher uses to put out in the bush to catch wild animals. The unsuspecting animal steps in the snare, it slams on his foot and he can't move. The poor animal dies there if no one gets to it to get it out. But the Bible said that our words are like snares to us, traps to us. They hold us captive, in prison, unseen chains, unseen bars that hold us back. Our own words, child of God. Your words become your reality. You are where you are today in part because of what you've been saying about yourself. Words are like seeds. When you speak something out, you give life to what you're saying. If you continue to say it, eventually that can become a reality. Whether you realize it or not, you are prophesying your future. And this is great when we're saying things like, I'm blessed, I'm strong, I will accomplish my dreams, I'm coming out of debt. That's not just being positive, you are prophesying victory prophesying success, prophesying new levels. Your life will move in the direction of your words. But too many people go around prophesying just the opposite. I never get any good breaks. I'll never get back in shape. Business is slow. I'll probably get laid off. Flu season is here. I always get it. They don't realize they are prophesying defeat. One can protect us from everything except what we say about ourselves. Then we come to another tremendously important area, perhaps the most common of all, what I call self-imposed curses. People pronounce curses on themselves. In Genesis chapter 27, we have the story of how Isaac was going to bless uh, Esau and the mother, Rebecca, who is the first Yiddish mama, if you know what a Yiddish mama is. Uh, switched them and she got Jacob acting like Esau and claiming the blessing. Jacob wasn't reluctant but he was afraid and he said this in verse 11. Jacob said to Rebekah his mother, look Esau my brother is a hairy man and I am a smooth skinned man. Perhaps my father will feel me and I shall seem to be a deceiver to him and I shall bring a curse on myself and not a blessing. But his mother said to him, let your curse be on me, my son. She took on herself the curse that would have been due to Jacob. A self-imposed curse. Now if you go to the end of the chapter, just the last verse, you find Rebecca beginning to use very negative language about herself. Rebecca said to Isaac in verse 46, I am weary of my life because of the daughters of Heth. If Jacob takes a wife of the daughters of Heth, like those who are daughters of the land, what good will my life be to me? I'm tired of living. What's the good of living? That's a typical statement by somebody who's under a curse. See? Never permit yourself to say that. Don't make negative statements about yourself. Don't say, I'll never be able to do this. I never succeed. I'm no use. I'm a failure. I just can't take it anymore. And then you go on and you say, I wish I were dead. I'd be better off dead. Do you know what you're doing? You're inviting the spirit of death. And he doesn't take many invitations. Ruth and I have dealt with countless people who needed to be delivered from the spirit of death because they'd invited it, they'd imposed a curse upon themselves. And we've learned one beautiful verse that will help, that has helped hundreds of people. And I'll share it with you. Psalm 118 verse 17. I shall not die, but live and declare or proclaim the works of the Lord. If you have made a negative 
remark about yourself, if you have imposed something negative on yourself, you need to revoke it by the positive. You see, as a remarkable example, you know that Peter denied three times he knew the Lord. Later on, after the resurrection, beside the Sea of Galilee, Jesus had a personal talk with Peter. And three times he said, do you love me? He made Peter affirm three times that he loved him. Why did he do that? Because Peter had to revoke the negative statements he'd made before the crucifixion. See? So if we've said something negative, and brought some dark shadow over us, we need to revoke the negative and replace it by the positive. And this verse is a perfect one. I shall not die. Doesn't mean you'll never die, but it means Satan's not going to kill you before your time. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. I think it would be good for all of us to say that. I first time you say it after me. I shall not die. But live and declare the works of the Lord. Now let's all say it together this time. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. Now once more. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. Now saying that may change the destiny of your life. All right, let's go on to... Uh, another example, the great tragedy of the Jewish history, Matthew chapter 27. Jesus is before Pilate and Pilate is willing to release him. And we read in Matthew 27, verse 24 and 25. When Pilate saw that he could not prevail at all, but rather that a tumult was rising, he took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person, you see to it. And all the people answered and said, His blood be on us and on our children. Watch that. A self-imposed curse. The great tragedy of Jewish, Jewish history. And by that, by those words, a strand of tragedy was woven into Jewish history, which has run for 19 centuries. What a lesson not to say the wrong thing about ourselves. I pointed out to you in the previous session that God had protected Abraham against curses. He said, anyone that curses you, I will curse. There's just one area that God could not protect the Jewish people from, from themselves. See? And that's true in our lives many times. God can protect us from everything except what we say about ourselves. 